Five Challenges with Multi-Stakeholder Initiatives on Artificial Intelligence, September 15, 2021, by Nanjira Sambuli. Applications of artificial intelligence are creating new spaces that need governance. Multi-stakeholder initiatives are promising, but they must meaningfully include everyone whose voices needs to be heard. Experience so far in digital governance shows that meaningful inclusion is a serious challenge. Multi-stakeholder initiatives have often worked well when they have narrow objectives in setting technical standards, the Internet Task Force being in an example. It was natural to borrow the model to try to handle broader issues around ethics, rights, and development, but this brings a new challenge of different stakeholders bringing different political and ideological paradigms. Experience so far suggests that efforts at meaningful inclusivity in multi-stakeholder governance fall short in five key ways. Number one, not all stakeholders are created equal. Multi-stakeholder initiatives typically include four types of stakeholders, international organizations, governments, private sector, and civil society. However, inviting stakeholders from each category can become box-ticking exercise rather than a genuine attempt to bring in diverse perspectives from different groupings around the world. Supposedly, global initiatives often comprise only Western nations, leaving out lower income countries, and typically also China, despite it being a tech giant. From the private sector, only big tech players tend to be invited or spotlighted. Smaller tech companies, meanwhile, and those which deal with digital technologies only tangentially, rarely have their voices heard, even though they may have more nuanced insights based on their niche focus areas or markets served. Civil society representatives are usually large international NGOs with offices in capital cities, rather than the kind of local actors who may better understand what is happening on the ground. Reason number two, participation is resource intensive. Even if many of the typically excluded groups mentioned above, local civil society organizations, smaller companies, and lower income countries are invited to participate in practice, they may not have sufficient time, money, or capacity. Part of the problem is the sheer number of initiatives in tech governance. There are around 600 alone in soft law mechanisms, many of which will invoke multi-stakeholderism. Participating in multiple such initiatives quickly stretches an organization's resources. Indeed, it can be a full-time job even to work out which initiatives it should prioritize taking part in. Reason number three, money shapes the agenda. How and by whom initiatives are convened remains a big challenge in multi-stakeholder tech governance. What legitimacy does the convener of an initiative have? How do they define the issues to be addressed and decide which actors they approach to participate? Also, from where do these actors get their funding? If a private sector player is funding governments and civil society to participate in a multi-stakeholder initiative, they can hardly be expected to deviate robustly from that player's interests. So while in theory, an initiative can look like it brings in a heterogeneity of perspectives, in practice, there can be multiple actors all pushing the same line. Reason number four, they can be talking shops. It is often not clearly articulated whether multi-stakeholder initiatives are intended to be merely consultative or capable of enforcing decisions. The Internet Governance Forum, for example, is widely seen as a mere talking shop. When multi-stakeholder arrangements lack the power to enforce it enables the bigger players in government and in private sector to engage in form shopping or retreat into more exclusive arrangements like Davos to take real decisions. Reason five, the relationship of multi-stakeholderism to multilateralism is unclear. Many nations that are not typically included in multi-stakeholder arrangements would prefer a multilateral approach to tech governance. In part, this is because they are familiar with the multilateral means of engagement, easing the resource challenges of navigating multi-stakeholder initiatives. They may also feel that multilateral approaches bestow more legitimacy. 
all stakeholders in their way can claim to be representative of people. Governments, because they are elected, civil society organizations, because they are funded by donations, and private sector players, because they depend on giving consumers what they want. But ultimately, it is states that have the authority to implement and enforce governance outcomes. In reality, both multi-stakeholderism and multilateralism have a role to play in tech governance. The challenge is figuring out how they should fit together.